Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. We're going to look at one of the seven major region, reasons non-Christians say they don't serve the Lord. That is, how could a good God allow hell? Why is there a hell? Well, actually, and I really got a, a better understanding of this reading C.S. Lewis and some of the succinct points he made about this, that hell is actually a necessity for the justice of God. Think about the Hitlers, think about the Stalins, think about the awful people throughout life, and they think they're getting away with it. Sometimes they live in tremendous luxury, like some dictators in different countries and all of this, and they suppress the people, they kill people, there's horrible genocides that go on. Well, hell, first of all, shows us that there is eternal justice. Secondly, hell shows us the severity of our sin that one sin sends us to hell for all of eternity. So often we can misread the scriptures or to allow popular theology to tell us God is so much love that it doesn't matter what you do, no matter how much you sin, a loving God's still going to let you in. Nothing could be further from the truth. There's only been one perfect man, and that's Jesus Christ. So we must come in through the door, Jesus Christ, God in flesh. We must apply the gospel, the plan of salvation that he made into our lives, which is repentance, faith in him, water baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, the reception of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, as he gives the utterance. And so once we do this, we're righteous in the eyes of God, and our sinfulness and our sins are remitted, and yes, we still have a sinful nature, but we have power and victory over sin. So here in this end time hour, it seems like sin is abounding. And, uh, you know, we, we need grace to abound even more. That there can be, so with so much sin and so much failure to live according to Scripture, that people can begin to get lackadaisical and say, that's okay, that's all right, little white lies don't matter, a little flirty here and all this kind of stuff. When again... There is a hell that awaits. Jesus Christ is coming back for a church that's without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And that is not just imputed righteousness, but that is the power of God unto salvation. That is actualized righteousness, walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. So that's the reason, you know, I guess we've had so much pleasure and free time, and Satan has fought us in that area, uh, maybe some money, that kind of thing that we forget to read the scriptures, obey the scriptures, talk in tongues, let Jesus pray through us, groan in the Holy Ghost, and have victory over sin. So why is our hell? First of all, it shows the severity of sin. And second of all, it shows the justice of God in punishing sin throughout all eternity. So hell is not, I remember one of the world's most notorious atheists, he became a believer in God. He said he couldn't deny that. He said, I can't become a Christian because of the concept of hell. Well, I would flip that around and say the concept of heaven is the most dramatic act of grace that anything could ever happen to any person. Uh, there's nothing like it in all of antiquity. It is the truth of the Word of God, this presentation of grace. And so hell... While I say it's almost an incidental, obviously it has extremely severe consequences, and according to Scripture, most people go to hell, and that's not just talking about people overseas, it's talking about people here in the USA, but when you see the greatness of God, His love, His desire for us to be holy, righteous with Him, live for Him in the power of the Holy Ghost, it is an awesome thing. So hell actually becomes a non-issue if you're serving Jesus Christ. And I know it says through the terror of the Lord persuade we men. Hell has expanded herself. But hell was created for the devil and his angels, not for you. Jesus, when he hung on the cross as substitution, had all of your sins, my sins, upon him. And so he doesn't want you to go there. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all should go come to repentance and everlasting life. God is knocking on the heart's door of every sinner. He's not far from each and every one of us broken down the middle wall of partition between Jew and Greek. We all have one plan of salvation. And that's actually another video, by the way, one plan of salvation for Jew and Greek. Do you have to do blood tests to see if somebody's got Jewishness or crypto-Jewishness in their, uh, you know, in their past or, or something like that? No, because 
told the Jewish disciples, go into all the world and preach, Acts 2.38. So you don't have to do blood tests and figure that out. So, but anyhow, so the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. God wants you and I to serve him. He's doing everything possible. If we go to hell, it's because we want to go to hell. It's because we desire it. It's because we're not seeking God. If you seek God, God will send you a preacher. That may be why you're watching this today. So hell is a p eternal punishment for that which is against the holy God. It's not like Rob Bell says that love wins, that there's an end to hell. There's not. And it is forever. It is for eternity, as Chan and many others show us. So hell shows the justice of God shows really uh, the mercy of God, how a great God could come and kind of pull us out of the pit and spend eternity. We'll be showed off as grace for Him and with Him forever throughout eternity. So uh, skip hell. You don't have to go there. Uh, Jesus Christ has made a way. Do everything possible to miss it. Do everything possible. It should motivate us to see our friends and our neighbors come to Jesus Christ. So this, this reason people give for not serving Jesus Christ in reality is a non-issue. It is showing there is justice throughout all eternity. God bless you. Let's have a great day in Jesus.